right. Fantastic. Ah, oh, okay. So just a little housekeeping. I'm really, really happy to be here. Um, good morning, everyone. Just give me a little um, chat in the side in the questions and answers mode. Um, you can put your questions and then just in the normal chat, you can just say hi so that you know that I can all hear you and um, I can't see you, but I'm definitely here for you. So, hey, good morning. Good morning. Fantastic. Making sure everyone's catching up. It is going to be live on the Passion for Hair Stylist hotline as well. So I know there's a couple of my girls that have had a few problems getting on, but you'll be able to see it on there. Good morning. <laughs> nice to um, see that everybody's here. Okay, so um, I'm just going to, I think we'll get started straight away because we've got quite a few of you already in um, and we can get going on our presentation this morning. So um, I kind of wanted to look at things a little bit differently. Um, I wanted to see what the consumer thinks of a hairdresser or a colorist in particular, because we're looking at color today and what their ideas are and what they expect from us. Um, there's quite a lot of information out there at the moment. We can really have a research about what people think of us. I mean, we talk a lot about how we need to be professional, what we, want them to see us as and what we're doing but it's interesting to find out what people actually think of their hairdresser or of hairdressers in general so i kind of had a little look um at this what i'm going to say is as we work through um i shall try not to keep you all morning but i have broken it down i'm going to be covering some things on um bleaching um uh, pre-colouring, recolouring, just some real fundamental problems, of course, a little bit later. I'm also going to be covering um, our new ash colours, the 0.12s, which you'll probably all um, like, or if you've started using them, there's some really interesting information to get the best results out of those. I want to cover a little bit on um, undertones as well, so that will all be there. But the, for the first part, I wanted to share what we've got in our toolbox um, that balances with what clients are expecting from hairdressers. Um, and also it helps to guide you and influence in your colouring behaviours. And I really think it's a behavioural pattern because when we're not sure of um, what to do, we go back to our old habits. But as I was saying, the industries move forward so quickly um, and sometimes we wonder why we can't achieve the goals that we want that's required by the, the client or ourselves. Um, and also we're wondering why it's not, the colour's not achieving its maximum potential, especially by when it's been designed by the colour company. And um, why isn't it doing what it said it was going to do? So um, definitely, uh, I would say it's usually 99% us um, the time. Yep, I'm going to cover a little bit to do with 30 and 40 volume and tell you why and what's so different about census. Thanks, Rich, that is gonna be there. Um, I'm glad you're popping that in the questions because then probably at the end of um, the webinar, I can do some questions. If I see them, I'll answer them um, as I go along, if that's okay. Um, so happy for the point one twos. <laughs> yeah, I am too, and they're absolutely delicious. I love them. So that's really good. So um, I wanted to express how, you know, I'm really privileged to be part of Passion, um, especially at the moment, I think in all this uh, current um, craziness still. Um, if you're unsure about anything, of course, um, we have the hotline. Uh, can I just say, I wanted to say a really big thanks because everybody on the hotline has been amazing. And sometimes I don't pick up the hotline till later on in the day. And I'm so impressed about how everyone's really, really encouraging, um, really good information and sharing that with everyone. So I'm going to go back over and say our app is probably one of the most important um, pieces of equipment that we've got. Of course, you can see the hotline. Definitely go on to the census website because that will give you more information um, and give you all the breakdown of everything now. So I've had a little look and everything's up there and it's doing really well. Um, and in English of the new products that have arrived, um, the 0.12s, but also all 
ingredients, everything that you really need to know is on that website. So don't be shy of using it. Um, and um, of course, we can find out everything the client needs with our Salon Love um, app, which passion I'm ever so grateful for. <laughs> okay, so I was having a little look and um, one of the things that obviously for us at the moment is about booking consultations and clients are becoming more and more um, aware about doing online appointments and booking that consultation. This is the most important bit. We need them to make this appointment ahead of time, especially if they've just got the courage of coming into your salon or they're making a big change. And we know we're going to have quite a few big changes again. And I would say more so this time, I don't know how you guys feel about it, but I feel like this third lockdown, people are definitely having a go at colouring their hair a little bit more and they're sending me messages. They're just going to do what they're going to do and then we're going to resolve that when we get back. In the first one, people are a little bit more nervous. Have you guys found that? I just think this time people are like, yeah, I'm just going to colour it and then my hairdresser can look after me afterwards. Um, so this part for me, um, looking at uh, making sure you get all these online appointments, if you can, um, it's a great idea to get FaceTimes going. Some of my clients are really liking the FaceTime idea, so it's really good. Um, I would say we can develop a game plan, we can figure out what we're going to do, we can look at and let me tell you clients are definitely going to be telling a few little porkies about their history on their hair over the last few months um, and I've said clients lie about the hair, maybe they're you know scarred by a bad set of highlights, home achieved especially right now or maybe they've cheated on you whilst we've been in lockdown, I know there's a few hairdressers out there that are you know, skulking around and doing a few colours. So they are going to be shy about saying all their information. Um, and we really need to know this information, what's what's behind it. Um, we are going to look at how to solve these problems. Um, we're looking at skin testing. Check in tomorrow, guys, with um, Debbie for the new skin testing um, regime, which I'm really excited to uh, look at and be part of. If we get a chance to be able to do our online testing or even if we get a chance for people to drop by um, and be able to pick up uh, a, like a strand test because this, this part of the information is really important. We need to know what's on their hair. We need to uncover the health, the history. Um, we want to make sure we give them the right price guidance. One of the things that was really obvious to me is that people really still don't understand why we need to charge what we need to charge and I don't know if that's because of us or because we've put lots of YouTube things on there to say how easy stuff is and how achievable this is and it looks like it doesn't take that amount of time so um, clients are still needing that guidance of price uh, also gives you a better idea for time and if we need to do any pre-colour work so any work beforehand, so we will be using definitely um, a little Malibu C, whether it be crystal gel or the colour preps. Um, with the skin testing last time I sent out colour preps, they were brilliant for me and they really gave me a good head start on how I was going to um, continue their new colour journey, if you like. Am I talking too fast? I'm not rambling. I hope you guys are. Um, staying with me on this um, good okay so um, pictures uh, for me I prefer clients to bring their pictures with them or with them on their consultation um, as we've said here there's only so many words you can use to describe um, Jenna Tatum's lob and even so they'll probably good morning they'll probably fall short clients definitely do they're not good at sometimes getting the the idea across of what they want. Photo is the easiest way to look for the exact cut. Um, it kind of gives us a really good idea of the lengths and we can all think about when we first got on the shop floor um, about how short we maybe took somebody's hair um, or too angled or took them too blonde. So it's really important to think about um, the hairstyle that's going to work with your client and also what they least like. Um, 
if one of the great things is uh, actually I was talking to Daniel last week I've got and um, went on to Passion for Hair's YouTube if you guys been looking at that if you haven't get yourself online have a look on the YouTube channel all these videos are there and they were brilliant it gave me an opportunity to scoot through have a look at some information and actually it kind of guided me to what I was going to be talking about today as well so that we all work in synergy it's really interesting have a little look okay so um one of the things that debbie describes and talks about a lot and i know um carly and Brittany are real advocates of this is about keeping quiet in the chair you and them sometimes the client keeps too quiet they don't tell you um they don't tell you all their history or they don't tell you that actually that doesn't feel quite right maybe that's uh, been on too long or I don't I don't understand this and they don't say too much and um, constant consultations are the key and ongoing consultations whilst we're looking and doing their hair one of the things I've really learned is that clients know a little bit about prostate tests clients know a little bit about elasticity tests um, and one of the important things to do when you're doing big colour changes is to make sure that you're um, explaining to your client what you're doing because they really want to understand. And it's important for you. I think you have to say, I'm just checking the strength of your hair whilst this colour's taking. These parts are really important for me. Um, I've learnt them along the way. Um, it's... It, it's yeah, it's probably one of my biggest pieces of advice that I can give is checking that health of the hair continuously while you're working. So as we would while we're cutting hair, we'll talk them through why we're cutting it like this. We should be doing exactly the same for colour. Um, it helps us to think about placement. Um, and also if we're a little bit more uh, controlled and talking about what we should be talking about, um, then we won't be disturbed too much, we don't forget what stage we're at, we're constantly checking that hair, set your timers. Does that make sense for you guys? Brilliant, yeah, you've been on there too, Maria. That's great. Yep, I'm really um, enjoying that. So, um, <clears throat> I was listening to Carly's um, presentation the other day. By the way, Carly, if you're around, I thought that was amazing. Um, and it's really interesting to talk about uh, the hair, the ha health, sorry, of the hair and um, scalp. And um, one of the things that we don't sort of explain enough is um, clients need to be guided to help with a little extra prep before seeing us. Maybe not to show up with hair that's full of product, for sure. Especially at the moment, um, I think they're super dependent on dry shampoo. Um, or the root cover sprays or powders um, and they're wearing a ton of product on their hair at the moment on a regular basis especially to try and hide these roots. Um, product build up can coat the hair and even block some absorption of colours um, and some bleach plus if they're loading it up it can be a little bit misleading on what actual level they are naturally um, and as with any colour consultation your diagnosis of natural colour is the most important part so looking at how much grey hair coverage for sure um, and if they're using a root cover spray or they've got something like that you can't really tell and you can't really tell if um, <clears throat> uh, how much percentage of white hair whether it looks a little bit resistant do you remember me talking about one of our other um, webinars? We talked about how do we know if somebody's hair is resistant or not? And often that's, um, uh, you can tell by you'll have a small regrowth that you're going to be covering today, and then you'll have a slightly lighter band, and it might not be everywhere. Usually when somebody's quite resistant, it's in little areas, probably like through here on the temple, often around this front it's not usually they're not usually resistant everywhere so if they're using a root cover up spray we can't really tell how much is resistant in those areas because the root cover up spray will make those little lighter pieces appear dark 
So we're not going to get the real true um, reflection of what we need as a natural diagnosis of natural hair. Does that is that does that make sense? So um, I recommend, brilliant, I recommend that you're going to be using maybe a slightly clarifying shampoo to remove all of that or um, I would ask them to do that 24 hours before they come in for their consultation. Um, obviously an online consultation is much harder to see their natural colour but of course you can get an idea of how big the roots are and how long that's going to take you. So if you're doing an online consultation, look at that. You can't get a diagnosis of their natural colour until they're in your chair. But if you're guiding them and saying, look, don't wash it on the morning. Um, if you can do that 24 hours, maybe the day before, that would be perfect because then um, you're not worried about uh, any irritations where they've just freshly washed their hair. Um, but it gives you a really good idea of what they need. Um, Again, I would be looking at um, different treatments, how to stabilise their um, hair porosity. Um, so when, when you're thinking about a client that turns up with hair full of product like hairspray, for example. <laughs> yeah, Ashley, people don't understand. They shouldn't come in. But it's down to us to um, give that idea and that... Um, especially now, especially when colours are not taking so well. So that's actually really important what you just said there because often we we talk about hairdressers not doing the same as last time. Are you happy with your colour? Do we just do the same? There are clients in our client list that I can think of five or six that I know have had the same blonde perhaps they have a few different colors run through but they like their regrowth to be the same and they have done for the last few years keep encouraging change but they don't do i worry about their root retouch on their hair when they come in not so much i ask them to remove it because i think that's important but i know what there is but when they start having changes or the colour's not taking so well, this is really important for us to really, yeah, really explain. You can't rub it off. It needs to be removed. Um, so back to thinking about hairsprays, product in the hair. So if you're using um, Euphora hairspray and the new Census Rush, Rush is my favourite, um, it brushes out really easily. But you can't get a good idea and of the porosity of the texture of the hair. So uh, Carly was explaining last time how to feel across the cuticle and how you're gonna look at those things. You can't see that if they've got a lot of hairspray in their hair. So those are really important factors when we're thinking about coloring and how we're looking. So, um, this one is really, it popped up frequently for me. So should you be getting your hair cut before or after your colour. Um, I know as a busy stylist, we want to colour the hair first, don't we? It's what we're taught. We've always been taught the same things. Um, but again, um, our colouring skills are have developed so much more. I think that the way we th place colour now is so different to just, you know, an ordinary set of highlights. Yes, you've got your clients that will have their regrowths and they will have their colour and then they're cut straight after. It's no problem. But um, this has really popped up frequently. My view, I think if the client is going for something more complex, uh, which you're discovering your new consultation techniques, um, perhaps like an ombre or a balayage or money lights or however you're looking or something that's really creative, I would always schedule popping the cut in first because it guarantees you'll know exactly where to place your ombre, your balayage, your highlights of how they actually wear their hair. And placement is a really big, um, it plays a really big role when it comes to these uh, lived in colours. Um, <laughs> if it's a change of style, I'd love to have the time to cut first and then add colour to enhance it perfectly. Me too. And I think the only way that we're going to be able to fit these in of how that works is by doing our online consultations first and having that opportunity. Um, 
and maybe talking to the client about timing. Everybody is so rushed all of the time and they come in, they're like, I haven't really got five hours to spend in the salon. No, but the type of change that we need or that we're going to be doing now as we go back to the salon, I think we're going to need more time. Um, so for me, placement, as I say, plays um, a big role when it comes to these techniques, um, whether it be uh, especially of these lived in colours um, or something extremely creative. Going months without a colour or cut is difficult. Um, and I don't think that uh, we explain enough, especially for our bleach um, regrowths, that we really don't want them to go for too long without that uh, colour being done. Okay, so um, we talked about um, how, well, Carly actually, I wanted to add this because Carly actually talked a lot about having more frequent haircuts when you're growing the hair out or when you're trying to um, make the hair thicker. And actually, um, this is really important for a colorist as well. I think doing so helps you avoid breakage, um, which in turn keeps the hair more healthy and stronger as the the style is growing or the long hair is growing but it also when you're thinking about having those ends really nice and sealed and getting a really good cut on that it makes it easier for us colorists to um makes it easier for us colorists to uh color or change the colors more often because the hair is much more healthy so this part for me is really really important um, I've had a little thing that says my internet has crashed a little or it's not so good. Is everybody okay? Can't wait for a haircut. Me too. <laughs> um, yep, I think that we are going to, would you recommend a crystal gel before colouring um, when we return? Yes, I think crystal gels will be a huge um, advocate in our um toolbox I think that we are going to use more and more of our color removers to be able to look at the history um, and have a little look I'm going to explain a little bit more about that oh great I'm glad you can <laughs> so let's have a look at our next okay there's a lot on the market at the moment so I know I don't have to explain to you guys but the clients are getting more more information so a little while ago um i don't know maybe two or three years ago we were really worried about these online color uh things popping up that clients can pick up their color um and be able to uh send them the information they send them sort of a professional color back in the things back in the post and they're able to put that on but um, obviously, let's think logically about this. The more information that's going out there, I mean, this is a strange time for us, but it also is really raising that level of professionalism for hairdressers. One, clients are understanding that our job's not as easy as they thought it might be, um, and they forget that we've trained for years and perhaps that we are still continuing to train, as I am myself. Um, and box colour, one size doesn't fit all. Um, there's some on the market at the moment about ammonia free colours um, and they're trying to tap into that market of being more uh, professional and more healthier for the hair. But um, the clients are understanding um, that um, it's got to be formulated so everyone and anyone can use it. So usually this means that um, of course, we know that it's not remotely the same about as ours. So it's becoming more apparent, which I am loving as a colorist, that finally the, the clients are starting to understand the best ammonia free color um, on the market at the moment is found in salons. Um, we have to think about expressing that to our client. But just so that you know, this is out there. It's really being talked about at the moment. Um, and this is why we have to customise everything for our client um, to achieve the healthiest hair that we can and the happiest client colour, of course. Um, and the average client is getting more and more savvy. Um, so there's a few extra questions that they are going to ask. How is everybody feeling about that? Do you find that the clients are becoming more savvy about box colour now? 
Um, and I hear less and less on the market about colours that are being mixed up and just sent to them. Yeah, they do. They are asking more questions. I think they've got much more savvy. So here are a couple of common things um, that I like to just add um, a little because I think we haven't touched on these for quite some time. So um, yep, yeah, Perry says she just had a client message her about box dye <laughs> saying, you were right, it's not as good. Yay. <laughs> good. That's what we want. So um, a couple of things that I was thinking about uh, that we haven't touched on. So um, why do blondes sometimes go green? Um, and we know that generally it's more porous than other colours, um, which leaves it susceptible to absorbing whatever's soaked in. Um, the idea of swimming pools. So once we get back into travelling and moving around um, and being able to, or if clients, I don't know if you guys have noticed, I seem to see a lot of my clients in hot tubs. Um, that's encouraging for us it is um so i've seen my clients and i'm thinking wow okay they're spending their time nice doing nice things but of course in the same thing as in hot tubs anything like that the um things to keep everything clean is what's going to be our problem and the other problem is whilst they're coloring their hair and not having it cut so regularly of course their hair is going to be um, absorbing these things so I wanted to talk to you and just remind you what to do if you get green hair because we haven't talked about it that much um, I wanted to talk to you about trying to get some information for your clients now to protect their hair and thinking about what's available um, yeah I've got a little solution for you Daisy I'm going to tell you about that with purple shampoo yeah it can react with the toner and make it go green so um, the most important thing that you can talk to your client is about protection. Um, so of course, now we're thinking about what can we use on the hair to keep these masks on, uh, protect the hair whilst they're in these hot tubs or they're gonna be swimming. And we know that they've got to have a catch up on getting their hair back in their most healthiest condition. Of course, we're gonna be encouraging them when they come in. The best um, example is to be able to use a crystal gel. That for me is brilliant on green hair. Um, I want to talk to you a little bit about fards and toners. So uh, for example, when they overuse uh, blonde shampoos, so zero yellow, or perhaps ones that are on the market that are a little bit stronger at the moment, and they one dry the hair out, um, and then in turn, because they're drying the hair out more often, uh, they're using this blue shampoo or this anti-yellow shampoo and it's absorbing more as well because the hair's more porous and usually they're a little strong. So the best thing that you can do here is um, use, uh, yes, you can use a little clarifying shampoo. I always recommend one clarifying, one moisturising, just to really help that. And also use our fard. Um, and the best one on those little areas is to use a little drop of sand and a little drop of gold. Just massage it in the areas that's needed. And because it's fard, the client can take that or order that on Sal Love and you can explain how to do that when they've used too much zero yellow. Yeah. It's my favourite little trick, actually, Daisy. Thank you for reminding me for that one. Um, and it's brilliant. And do you know what? The client can do that. They, they can't do too much wrong. And they feel like they're solving a problem that you're talking them through. So they have more faith in you or, or they have added faith in you that um, you're giving them some ideas. And all of this is done with treatments. So it's really looking after the health of the hair. Okay, so um, this one popped up everywhere. Is aftercare really that important? I mean, we don't have passion for hair. I mean, we, we talk about this all of the time. I really, really hope that um, looking in all the current magazines and how things are going, I mean, 
as a stylist, when I first started training, um, I really um, struggled with the idea of being able to sell products all the time to every single client. But the salon I was in, we had to sell two products in the morning and two in the afternoon, and it was set. So if I wanted to keep my job there, that's what I had to do. They were really, really strict with me. And it's been something that we we as stylists know that aftercare is really important. Why would you spend all that money getting your hair looking like this and you're not looking after it at home? But let me tell you, there is more information, more and more, becoming about what's important about aftercare. Um, I am so happy for this. It, it's um, I think it helps our... Um, career it's definitely going to help our sales um situation for sure but i think the more um this is written about and the more that we talk about it the better so um we definitely need to say for the first two weeks after any hair color treatment the hair is vulnerable so it's in, it's most important that we um use the correct aftercare and the clients are starting to learn more information and to help with their like maintaining their long-lasting color results. Here is where I also add things like fard, um, uh, direct color maybe. So they love their bright bang colors. This is where I would encourage that as a retail. Fards are brilliant for me because they're able to intermix, they're able to create shades and they're able to keep their color how it looks. So you, almost you say to them, this is the fard, you need so many grams of this and that, and you're able to keep up your um, toners, if you like, and keep that shade looking exactly like it is now. Um, and also, if they're bright reds and coppers, we know we're going to get some fading, but this is important. The fard has become like a real um, go-to seller for me, especially with these transitions of fading to grey. Um, it really helps them to maintain their colour and also it makes my life as a colourist much, much easier. Um, the other question that really came up, was it better to colour your hair before or after your holidays? And I'm even though we are trained that we always say, let's get your colour due in, like before your holiday, you want, they want everything to feel nice before you go on holiday. I'm the same. You have everything done, don't you? Hair, nails, haircut, for sure, haircut, without a doubt. Think about getting things planned in for your clients, pre-booking appointments, so when you know they've got a holiday, perhaps it's just going to be a top-up colour, so just a small um, colour right before their holiday, but the month before or six weeks before you're doing your changes or doing a bigger service i don't encourage any color changes before um holidays i try to say to them once you come back let's have a look um what we need to do next um okay so victoria i'm going to answer those um little questions at the end if that's okay so that we can keep moving through um our uh presentation but I will pick up all your questions because we'll pop them right at the end just so you know so keep asking if I see I will um do environmental aggressors really affect the hair yes um clients are starting to be more aware of this they're starting to understand about drying fadeness split ends when their hair is more damaged um they'll allow us to talk about aftercare but they're also starting to understand about what um what it does to color why we can't color because they're becoming much more savvy and your clients will be more savvy the more you explain to them so always keep your consultations in check always keep your information correct don't ever fib to a client to make it sound better because they will remember and they will say to you but you said this last time so it's very difficult to go back if you don't understand a product or you're not sure the best way to use that, please um, get in touch with us at Passion because we want you to be able to use the products in the best way and be able to explain that to your clients so that you maintain this really long relationship with them and they build up that trust. Um, there's enough information or enough of us here that want to give you that information. 
um, and that whether that be through for any of our toolbox from our Malibu C to um, our census products, we're really, really um, there with you every step. Um, and also just to remind you, when we talk about um, makeup, think about uh, mineral makeup. We, we don't talk about it enough and clients are becoming hugely aware of um, what they put on their skin and their hair. So we still have an incredible amount of mineral makeup to think about um, this removing around the hairline um, so that our colours can take really well. So in the next step, I'm going to talk about some pre-colour treatments. Um, I'm going to talk about product application and how much of it. I want to talk to you a little bit about the correct peroxide choice. I'm going to talk to you about undertones and why pre-colour, recolour. We want to cover a little bit on mixable plus because I know that a few, few of you asked about mixable um, and nectar. And um, is there any questions on that first part about or anything you wanted to add about the first part um, on our, what clients are thinking and what they're expecting from us? Or can I just move along? <laughs> Um, so if I just have a look, where did we say? Okay, so um, I can answer that question. What do you say to your guests to encourage a crystal gel service? Um, it's a good question, Victoria. Thank you. I think um, crystal gel is becoming more and more important in our services um, and part of our colouring regime. Um, I think that... I have some clients that have it every single time, um, some clients that are really not uh, phased by it and they, they're like, no, I'm not bothered by that, it's not something that I'm interested in and maybe that's my, my way that I haven't described why we need that. So I often talk about um, changes, so what they've had on their hair, what they've been doing to their hair and I really would say crystal gel helps me to neutralize all of that remove everything that's in or sitting on top of the hair to encourage that um, new color that's going to be placed there and especially if they're on medication anything like this for me crystal gel would be a really important part of that service and whilst you're doing your online consultations that's when you can encourage this type um, of treatment All right, so um, here we've got, um, these are our little pre-colour treatments that we used to have before. So, um, and I know a couple of the questions that came up, um, I wanted to talk to you about our old products, what they look like, and what we've got in place of. So, um, for example, the scalp relief oil, have you guys all seen our new um oil our new scalp oil absolutely love it but it also doubles up as our skin yeah I love it too it also doubles up as our skin screen so um I still have some skin screen left and I'll carry on using that but I absolutely love our new oil and I massage it all the way around the edges of um the first part of their skin uh my hair obviously being black my skin just absorbs colour like you wouldn't believe so I always end up with a really big stain but now using this new oil it's brilliant um, I love it I really massage it into the scalp as well to encourage any sensitivities and I think that that's going to be a massive um, part in your toolbox when we get back in because clients have been doing all sorts to their hair um, and we're going to start recolouring their hair and uh, I know a few of you are worried about using higher volumes of peroxide um, and they can feel the oxidation and the tingling. If you put this oil on first, you don't get that. So for me, that's I think that that's going to be a really big, important part on having that real comfortable um, experience within the salon. Okay, so we used to have our equaliser spray. What do we have now? So there are a few things that are coming up um, that you'll be excited to hear. In the meantime, I'm using recovery spray. One of the ones I really like is um, the Euphora um, 
spray uh, I really love that because it does the scalp it does the hair it's everything um, all in place of if you need any more information on that please um, ask uh, Maria the girls they're really fantastic explaining those um, if we need something that we want to spray on the hair before we are applying toners uh, the recovery spray is really uh, fantastic for that too all right so rich saying here the lockdown and time not having it colored is perfect time to recommend for clean canvas for any color if they um use detox for their skin they'll be more likely to do the same for the hair yeah that's a great tip actually so you can talk about that um crystal gel as a detox service i really like that i'm going to add that to my little box thanks rich um i think that's a fantastic way to explain how to do it um, why you're doing this particular treatment all right so a few of you have asked um, percentage of white hair formulas so I've just tucked this in here now so that you can have a little look and um, this is an idea quickly so that you can see the percentage the best way to do that is of course um, looking on our app because the census app gives you perfect amount and when you're looking at um julieta and mc2 um it will say up to 50 percent, and then af after that it will be 50 to 100 percent. but it will give you the perfect mixtures of what you need but if you've got your personalizing a color and you're having a little look and you're thinking i love this this formula here is brilliant to get you started shield oil that's the replacement yep Courtney, that's perfect. Replacement now scalp oils called the Shield Oil. Yeah, and it's brilliant. You'll love it. So um, this is just a quick standard solution for percentage of white hair, but I really encourage you to use the app. Um, if you're a new stylist or an old stylist or you're new to this product, it really gives you the right information. And the most important part it gives you as well is the choice of peroxide because this is becoming more and more apparent. And I still notice a few people still feel very nervous about using that higher levels and why we need to use higher levels. Um, the next part is that I wanted to talk about was the amount of product to be put. Um, uh, applied to the hair because this part is very important for me um, we have a very creamy consistency of the product um, it goes exactly where you place it it's all about application so when we talk about why hasn't a color taken it will be our consultation so diagnosis of um, natural hair it will be the amount of product that's applied usually we don't apply enough um, especially when we're working through areas that are uh, bigger regrowths or around the front in areas that are a little bit more stubborn. We haven't realised the percentage of white hair to natural hair. Now for me white hair is never a problem because white hair covers now, we don't have a problem with that. Maybe 20 years ago, 25 years ago when colouring was first out, like really sort of thinking about those colouring of darker hairs um everything was 20 volume everything was just covered and that's just the way it was because there were more natural shades now people are going lighter they want more ash tones or they want more honey hues or there's so much difference in coloring and um, we need to make sure that it's the percentage of natural hair compared to the white hair and what shade that is so we really have to think about what is the depth that person is naturally? Because this is where our problems lie for white hair coverage. Not for the fact of um, the product doesn't cover white hair. It sure does cover white hair. Also, the next important part is this amount of product to be had. So you can see when we're using 10 volume, we actually need less product on the hair than we would if we're using 40 volume. Why is this important? Because when we're thinking about using 10 volume, we're darkening usually, we're usually adding colour to the hair. Um, and we 
don't need to keep that product on so long. So if you think about our time scale for 10 volume is literally um, 25 minutes, uh, which is perfect for 10 volume. As we go on to 20 volume, we need to leave that on for 35 minutes, 30 volume, 45 minutes, 40 volume, 55 minutes. So it's really important that they have that whole time. We need a thicker layer of hair so it doesn't oxidize quickly. We need it to be sitting and encased in product so that it can spend that whole time lifting to get to its maximum lift. This is really important. If we don't apply enough product, there's not enough. It doesn't slow it down. So oxidation happens far too quickly and we don't get that full maximum potential of lift. I'm hoping that makes a little bit more sense to you. So when you're thinking about applying um, super high lift, that's 40 volume, we need to be using more product than we would doing a normal regrowth is really important. If we're using a fashion color with 40 volume, so for example, 7.4, but we need um, 40 volume, we definitely need to apply more products than we would if we were using 7.4 and 20 volume because we need maximum amount of lift. The hair is darker, it needs to be lifting and oxidizing slowly so it can do its work. Um, does that help with the reasons why, how much product we need to use? Because I think this part is a really important part um, of education and I think this one for me is one that you know when you have a new stylist come in and they're like oh I'm not sure about sensors or I've never really I don't really understand it this part for me was one of them when I was told about this I was like oh that's my aha this was really like right I totally understand now um, and this is the part of information that I think you need to share that with your fellow stylists, you know, like I always think to myself um, and I remember from a bad experience of being in, in a salon that didn't share information enough within the team and um, I wasn't getting the right results that I wanted and I was thinking why because I probably didn't do enough research on the product myself and um, we definitely didn't have groups like this to help us with this information and um, I think if you're using a particular brand in your salon, all of the team have to be involved on expressing how wonderful it is. Because if one person's having problems with that, that affects all of us. So I know you're individual stylists and you're looking at building up your businesses, but when you're under one roof, we really need to share as much information so that we can get the best for that um, and the clients then understand it. And so does the stylist. Okay, so um, this part for me is, um, okay, so let me just go back to this one. Right, what is reverse colouring? I talked about this a little bit. Did you, yeah, teamwork makes the dream work. Thank you, Steph, it sure does. Um, do you remember me, you guys, did I talk enough about reverse colouring? I know we did some when uh, we managed to squeeze in a class um, last year, uh, just before the other lockdowns. But reverse colouring for me is really very important. Um, I'm going to refresh on it. Thanks, Maria. I'm going to refresh on it because um, when we apply colour, our clients are going to come back, those that haven't coloured their hair, by the way, hopefully there'll be lots, but those that haven't coloured their hair, they're going to have quite a large regrowth. So the first part, obviously, is about... Um, application how much product do I need to apply so for example standard procedure for me most of my clients I would say are oh, I would use 30 volume on quite a high percentage of my clients are 30 volume now I'll get into that in a minute but they've got a large regrowth how do we um, cover all of this because normally with a tint brush we would apply the color and just apply down the hair and what happens is, is we get plenty of product on that first part of the regrowth, but the end of the regrowth, there's not so much product that's on that part. It sort of fades out with the brush. Do you agree? So my idea is reverse colouring, um, and I use this a lot when I do bleach regrowths, large bleach regrowths, which I'm going to explain as well. 
So I would reverse colour. So for example, here, I would start my tint brush with the amount of product that I have and work up to the parting. Then I would come back down and go this way. So I almost get the same amount of colour on my roots and where the coloured hair starts. So my root is large. Um, if we don't, the colour will fade out. It takes brilliantly at the roots and then there'll be a little band that hasn't really lifted. So this is really important, reverse colouring and why? Because then you get a good amount of product distribution on the regrowth area, but also towards um, your roots, like where the um, coloured hair then starts. Yeah, um, no banding, it's really important. So um, reverse colouring, we need it now more than ever, I think, when we get back. And of course, when we do um, bleach regrowths, but I'll explain further down the line as we get. I wanted to remind you all as well, it's not often that we get um, a client that hasn't, or is completely virgin hair, or if we have a client that hasn't coloured their hair for quite some time and they have a very large regrowth. This part is really important. So of course we say hair that's only three centimetres, we can do a root application and lengthen ends and make sure we apply enough product. But, for example, I've just said to you about reverse colouring on um, this part of the hair. So we would start um, this end uh, here so that we can get enough colour to match up with the roots. Now, if the roots were slightly longer, so they're here, what we need to do is do this part first. So we would do reverse colour from here to here. This needs to be applied. And the lay-in time for that needs to be at least 20 minutes. And then we would then do the roots and then cover over that part again. Does that make sense? Because if we do the roots and then just take it down to wherever the root started, this part will always be more lifted than this part. So it's really important that we work through the longest hair part first and that's got to be anything after 4 to 15 centimetres. So, uh, let me think here, I can see. Um, four to cent so, if we're thinking roots coming down to here, which some clients, when they come back to us, if they, if they had their hair done, you know, in the end of, uh, the beginning of December, by the time they get back to us, I think they'll have roots that are going to be quite that long. So, we need to do that part from where the coloured hair starts, up to about a centimetre or so to the roots, leave that on for 20 minutes, then we need to apply it to the roots and cover all that part again. Does that make sense? And then you'll get a really good colour result and you leave it on to develop the root time. Um, no, I wouldn't use a high developer for my mid-band than my root colour, but I'll explore, see that as we go along. Any questions about that product application on just tinting hair, just colouring hair? We're not bleaching at the moment, this is just colouring hair. Of course, if we have super long hair, um, we talk, or it's a new colour, virgin hair, then we're super lucky. Application on the ends, 20 minutes. Repeat the application for lengths and ends, 20 minutes, and then we apply it to the roots and then all the way to the ends again. So. In between when we need to, of course, if we're working on a piece here, we can't comb that off. So only 20 minutes on the root. No. So if we're doing this area here, we have 20 minutes. Then we apply it to the root area and cover back over to where the colour starts if it's a really large, large root. So we've done reverse colour up here. Um, and then we work all the way down and then whatever our colour choice, so if it's 30 volume, we need 45 minutes development for the whole thing. You can't take it off after 20 minutes. So but it needs a lay in time of 20 minutes of this bit here. It's got no heat. Um, this is why I always end up with this banding. You're welcome, Michelle. This is why we always end up with this banding here. So that's important. Lay in time for 20 minutes, do the roots, cover all the way over to where the colour, the coloured hair then starts again and leave that on for the full time. 
So that band ends up with a little extra time. Um, what if the hair is only 15 centimetres long? Would you do the ends and then the roots? So I have to think about how long 15... So, uh, yes, definitely I would, Ruth. So 15 centimetres, probably about maybe my length, are we thinking? Um, I, if I was a first application of colour and I've got no... Um, colour in the hair or I've grown it out that much and I've just got a little bit I would always do this part first and then I would do my roots and cover everything again especially if I'm lightening of course if you're darkening you don't need to do that at all you can just cover root to tip hopefully does that help Ruth with that question How's everyone feel about those, that product application, the amount of application and how you should apply it to get a really good result? An even result. Brilliant. Perfect. Those are the, the small parts of information um, that I think that we need to share with our uh, young professionals. So, for example, for me, like when you're doing your training, you're sort of you explain the regrowth or where how to apply virgin color but we don't really explain this part of having such a, a large regrowth i mean i know it's probably our times now that's making this more apparent but i think it's a really good um up skill like they develop their skills more when we're talking about these parts of information so for me okay so I can move on from application. If you need anything, of course, I can flip back. So if you need that. All right. My next most important decision is I understand what my roots are. I know what I'm doing. What should I be using peroxide choice and the actions? This um, slide is probably my most favorite slide ever once you this uh, again was my biggest aha moment so it, you can see I've got a red and a blue an A and a B I've got my volumes at the side uh, do you remember when we were taught um, at college or when I was taught at college I don't have many long years ago that was um, I was taught that 20 volume would always lift um, two shades 30 volume three and 40 volume four um, and that was that and um, actually uh, that's not entirely true because now as we understand um, because science has moved on and things yes we can get those levels of lift but really um, those maximum levels of lift are on lighter hair and we were never taught where that sat in so if you look at the red around the edge of the box there, that is um, anything levels one to five. Um, naturally, I'm probably about three, so I fit in that level. Um, anything that's round in the blue, that's if your their natural hair is level six to ten. Um, it's not often that I find somebody naturally a level nine or a ten. Uh, Steph that works with me, she's probably about a nine around that front, but she's about an eight. She's the lightest really that I ever see um, on hair as an adult. Obviously, when they're younger, their hair is sometimes really, uh, really baby blonde, but it doesn't often stay that way. So we really need to have a look because where do they sit? Are they in, in that level A or B? Because that really makes a difference on our peroxide choices. So when you look... Um, at level A, with if you're using 20 volume, you are only gonna get one level of lift. I don't whatever you say is one level if you're between a level one to a five. And if you can't make up your mind if a client is a level six or a five, assume they're a level five. Don't assume that they're lighter. Perhaps in a couple of little temple areas or maybe on that very crown. But you know, we're taking a section all the way down here and most likely they're going to be a five at the back so 20 volume is only going to give you one 30 volume maximum you'll get is two and 40 volume maximum you'll get is three except when you've got super high lift but you're only going to get a three levels of lift when you're using 
ordinary tint from M3K, MC2, Julieta. Um, fast colour is completely different because you don't get maximum amount of lifts there at all. But I can do something separate for fast colour later. So we're thinking traditional colour in here. Any questions on that? Because I think that's probably um, really important for your choice of peroxide. All right. I'm good. I can move on. So um, in between here, if I think about uh, why I would choose um, 30 volume, um, on salt and pepper hair, for example, or why would I choose 40 volume on salt and pepper hair, for example? So if my client was uh, naturally a level four and she wanted to get to a level seven and she had over 50% gray hair. So for example, if I wanted like a 7.4, I've got to go from four, five, six, seven. So I know that's three levels of lift. My choice has got to be 40 volume. It's really important. Most people would have said, oh, you can do 30 volume. You can't. You need to do 40. Do I worry that she's got more than 50% grey hair? No. I shall add some base colour or 7.3 because in with my 7.4 because that will give me really good coverage on my white hair. And I will carry on using 40 volume because my white hairs will cover to the 7.4 and 7.3 because that's just how they'll look because it's a seven and my um, natural hair that's a level four that's the hair that needs to lift and get to a 7.4 if I use 30 volume those natural hairs will only get to a 6.4 and then next to my white hairs that have naturally colored because they do um, and they've covered and they're a perfect 7.4 it actually looks like those white hairs haven't taken um, and it's not, it's the other way around. Our natural hair didn't lift enough to get a true 7.4. So this is why don't be shy about using higher volumes of peroxides. We, our science has really developed and we really understand um, <clears throat> why we should be using higher levels. Uh, do I explain to my clients that I'm using a high level of peroxide? Never. Um, it's not there. They want a particular colour. If, for example, they wanted an 8.4 and they're a level 4, I know I can't get an 8.4. Don't even try it because it's not going to happen. Ooh, maybe if you used a little lifting booster, you might get a 7.5, but you won't get a true 8.4. So um, I then need to explain to my client that I need to lift her hair first. And then she can have that. Otherwise, she won't. it will look more like a 7.4 rather than an 8.4. So this part of the consultation is really, really important. And then after that, I don't tell my client that I use 20 volume or I use 30 volume. The only times that I will say to a client what developer I'm using is if I'm bleaching. And they say, oh, I used to bleach my hair. And I used to use like 30 volume or 40 volume on my scalp. And I go... <gasps> We never use anything over 20. That's the only time. But if I'm using standard colouring, um, I will not explain uh, what level of peroxide. Um, if I'm using 40 volume, a part of me with, you know, you guys using MC2, part of our rituals of using colour is I've become more and more um, using my shield oil or as it was the scalp oil on pro probably every single colour. I think it's a really nice um, treatment to have beforehand. Also as well, um, a few of my clients have been complaining that their scalp is a little bit drier at the moment. I think being indoors a lot more. Also, um, it's been, you know, extreme weathers, hasn't it, at the moment. And so scalp oil, if their scalp is a little bit dry, um, and maybe they've got just some scales or something like that. When I massage that shield oil in, it stops the colour from developing on that on those areas, so it doesn't stain it. So all of those little things, the scalp oil for me is perfect. So if you're worried that the client might be more sensitive, there isn't any reason to worry. 
With 40 volume on the scalp, there isn't any reason to worry about using that mixed with Tintin. Of course, if you mix that with a different product like bleach, then we're going to have a problem. But for standard colouring and our cream colours, not at all. Um, are we happy with that part so far? I know um, when I talk to you about the 0.12s, this information is going to be the most important part. All right, so we've discovered all of that. We've used all our correct levels. We're using 30 volume. Everything's really nice, except for a couple of little areas. We've noticed when they've come back in for their next appointment, we can really see those areas, you know, where the color looks is perfect when they leave. And then they say, well, it, it looks like it hasn't taken like a couple of weeks later, just here or just inside under there. Can you see that? And I say, oh, okay. And so then I understand that perhaps those little areas are more resistant because it looks a little translucent further down, but everywhere else looks lovely. This is a really good way to tell if a client's hair is a little resistant. So we're gonna cover a little bit of pre-coloring um, for you guys, just in case you um, have forgotten or um, don't do it that often. So pre-coloring the rules are prepare um, the color with activator at low volume. So we've got low volumes. I'm gonna use Cosmetic Fix or um, five, level five, uh, sorry, five volume that we have now. Um, I'm going to choose one level lighter than my required target shade. I'm going to apply the mixture just where I need. And I'm going to use that sparingly. Do you remember when we looked at how much product to apply on this one, 10 volume? So if you're using fix or pre-colouring, it's going to be even less. We just need to deposit a little bit more colour into the hair. We don't need it to oxidise for long on that part. We use the product sparingly. Uh, develop in accordance with timing. So our timing will be 10 minutes and then we can remove the excess product. So if you've put a little too much product in, the best way to remove it is with a little... Um, kitchen towel or a disposable towel just to blot on the product. Don't comb it um, because you're going to comb that pre-colour into the old colour that's already there and you'll create dark bands on those parts of the hair. So don't um, comb that down. Just make sure that you dab it off if you've applied too much. And then you can apply your target shade um, that may be with 30 volume because remember they've got a scattering of darker hairs through so you carry on doing as you would normally and perhaps of course maybe they've got some base colour or if you've looked on the app it'll give you perfect measurements of what you're um, needing to achieve and then you develop for the full maximum time Lots of things that are really important to me is uh, some people ask me should I wash that pre-colour off uh, before I apply my other colour, don't do that. So you'll hear me talk about it a lot when I'm doing bleach work. I don't wash off to reapply. Um, now, my reasons for this is, um, obviously, we know that our pH of hair is around 4.5, 5.5. And when we start colouring, we take that up further. When we add water to the product, we bring that back down again. And so then we've got to go back up again when we colour. This is when irritations occur, drying of the hair occurs more. Our hair is already in a state of being coloured. So it's already in that level to absorb colour, to carry on um, taking colour and going lighter if needed. It's really important that we don't keep washing off before we carry on. So often we need to block, often we need to block carefully. Um, and we can just carry on with our colour service. Does that, guys, do, does that make sense? Chloe, am I right to answer that question for you at the end? Um, I'll do that. I'll do that at the end. Um, let's have a look. So here we are. Um, technique, pre-colouring. So our, if our target shades, our objective shades are gold or natural, we need to 
pre-color with a golden shade. So for example, if we're a 7.0, our target shade to pre-color with would be something like an 8.3. So a shade lighter added with some gold. We apply that just on those areas that are needed, so maybe like temple areas, wherever we're needed. And then we can apply our natural colour, 7.0, perhaps we're using that with 30 volume, and we can apply that straight on top of after 10 minutes. Um, what I tend to do is apply it to those areas, and then, for example, they're usually at the front because there's never really any resistant areas in the back because we're still quite dark usually that's the last place to go so I'll apply those and then I'll start my applying my colour on the darkest areas first and work up to them by the time I get there it's been about 10 minutes so that's really easy for that service to carry on all right so if our objective is brown we colour with exactly the same browns. So our uh, 0.2, for example, 0.24, um, they can be coloured with exactly the same colour, but a shade lighter, using one lighter. If we're looking at our pre-colouring with anything mahogany, for example, this one's um, like our brighter shades, or we need to be having a um, one part, of the red and then three quarters of natural and a level lighter so this makes it a li little bit tricky um so for example here um we would perhaps if it's a mahogany on a level five say pre-coloring we would need to use 6.5 because that would be our red and then a six in the natural so that would gi give us our pre-colour mixture with cosmetic picks or five volume that's a sh shade le lighter than our objective on a five mahogany hopefully that makes sense for you there but that and those are very small areas so think about how much colour you mix up when I say those areas you're gonna need sort of like five grams um, of colour so like maybe two grams of colour and just a very very small amount because of course with cosmetic fix you're going to do two grams of color and four grams of fix so we need a tiny amount and then we can apply where we need it so we're not being wasteful we need to think about being resourceful with our products um it's something that's really been playing on my mind about being more resourceful of what what we need to do when we're coloring um i think as colorists when we're busy and being on the go uh, we tend to be quick mixing up too much colour um, and I know as a salon owner I'm thinking about when we go back into uh, work yes we're going to have a full stack of products you know please God hopefully we'll have a full stack of things to be able to use but we want to be able to maintain that because we've been closed this time um, we're all balancing to keep all this in place and we need to be really careful and resourceful of the products we're using um, I think that's a really important message at the moment okay so pre-coloring with anything that's ash copper red or violet we're just going to be using a natural shade so for example if we like something that is um, like a one two or something like this this is more ash uh, we need to be thinking about our pre-colouring will be the natural set shade, so 0 0.0. How is that for everything on pre-colouring? Are we good? Haven't driven you all crazy too much? Sending you a heap of information. <laughs> Great. All right. So, um, brilliant. Thanks, guys. Um, it's nice. Sometimes I'm rambling on and I think to myself, oh, do I make sense here? And it's nice just to have a little um, feedback because you can't see faces, can you? You can just see mine. Oh. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about um, decolouring and colour removals. So, um, decolouring is in bleaching. 
um, colour removals as in maybe our SOS utilities, um, how we're going to remove colours and things like this without bleaching. So all of these things are really, really important. Um, the first part that I need to talk to you about is temperature. So whenever we're thinking about bleaching or lightening the hair, um, <clears throat> oh, sorry, that should say 25, not 35. I've just had a little peek at that, by the way, that should say 25. Um, it's really important not to uh, have our um, clients underneath air conditioning or underneath in this time when we get back to the salon um, to think about not having them right underneath heaters and things like this. So we need to make sure that we try and maintain anything uh, temperature below about 22, 23. It's really difficult for bleaches to take. And this is why often we find in the summer with the air conditioning or clients hopping in and out of the salon that our, our colours are not developing as they should. And this was the reason why I was explaining to you about why you should be colouring this hair here first, um, or here first, and then here, and then here, because we're not close to the scalp. We're not having enough body heat. So this part's important. Okay, so here we are. We've got, um, this is bleach applications now. So I know some of you guys uh, popped on the group chat that you were thinking about how to apply bleaches, what we would do and the best way. So um, at Census, we encourage these to do this technique. Um, hair length that's up to three centimetres, you can see it's short hair. So we would apply roots, lengths and ends together. Now, remembering with bleach or any of our deco products, um, often that we need two applications of bleach, but we're not going to wash that off. So with bleaching, the first 25 minutes to 30 minutes is when we get the most power from bleach. What we need to do is keep that power going for that full 55 to 60 minutes that bleach can stay on the hair for. After 25 minutes, if we needed to lift another two shades, which is often what we want to do. So say we've got somebody that's a level five and they're going platinum. You know, after 25 minutes, if they've still, we've only got to like, you know, a level seven, maybe an eight, but we know we need to get to platinum. If we left that all on just to develop as it is, not put our second application on, after 25 minutes, the bleach starts deteriorating in strength. So our colour will not get its, um, you won't achieve the goal of being platinum. So what you need to do is remove some excess. This is phase one, by the way. So we've done root ends and lengths together. We're going to leave it 20 minutes, 25 minutes. We're going to look at the hair and say, okay, we need another two levels of lift here. So we're going to remix our pro fresh product. We're going to just remove some of the excess. So maybe we might squeeze that into our glove, remove what's needed. This is coloured. This is not, not for a regrowth. This is all over bleach. So we can remove some of the product and then we can apply our freshly mixed product again. Most importantly, um, so that's the first part. Then we can develop for the time and you'll see she'll get another boost of 25 minutes to 30 minutes of power from the bleach again and this way you will achieve a really nice platinum blonde that's really lifted perfectly so that's the first part for short hair that's not got any regrowth and that's a new to color now um we do the same this is new to color by the way because once we've done um regrowth when i'm going to go over regrowths in just a second so this is full color um Length two, so up to 15 centimetres. You can see we've got phase one here. So phase one means the lengths and then ends from the roots. We let that develop for 20 minutes and then we do the roots, lengths and ends all again. Once we've done that, we wait another 20 minutes and then we reapply that again. All the way from roots to ends. Does that make sense? So this is virgin hair, and it's a bob length, it's say my length. The first phase will be from here to here, 
let that develop for 20 minutes roots from here to here let that develop oh so i'll do all my roots then i'll take it through all the way again let that develop for 20 minutes and look and i'll say okay i've still got two levels of lift you know to come up so then i squeeze some excess product out and then apply roots to ends all the way through again for another 25 to 30 minutes it's really important that you're making sure that um most likely when you're checking the hair i mean if you've got somebody that's lighter that say a level seven or eight you probably don't have to do a second application and one application will be enough to get them to platinum but if you know that they are a level five really um or six you know they're really going to need that second application so applying bleach carefully um is really important Okay, so hair length over 15 centimetres, so very long hair that you're going to bleach for the first time. You need to um, do the ends to here. Develop for 20 minutes. Then you're going to do, remove a little excess, 20 minutes you're going to do from here all the way back down. So you'll do this part first all the way and then take that down. Then 20 minutes, <laughs> do the roots. Do the roots and then take it all the way through to the ends so that it has uniformity. Now you're going to say to me, okay, but now I've done that. So I've now got my maximum of like 60 minutes or say, and, and the ends are, are perfect, but my roots are still a bit yellow and I need a second application. So what you need to do then is probably remove some product that's on the ends. You may um, do the roots again because the roots need a little more lifting and you can remove some of the product that's on the ends even to rinse some of the product that's on the ends that's no problem so um thank you elaine uh, would you charge more to the client using more um product so if i've got large is this for bleaching or is this for normal coloring because if it's for normal colouring, I would always, and they've got large regrowth, when they come back after now, everybody for me will be, okay, be charged um, for a global colour. With bleaching, um, I really put my prices up for bleaching um, and I charge more than I would for a normal regrowth or um, global colour. So, uh, because actually this is a more technical service and um, I suppose years ago, we didn't so it was something that was quite new to me but when i looked at my color uh, sorry, yeah my color prices i thought actually it's more technical with bleaching i'm going to be using more products i'm going to be spending more time with them rather than applying a color and uh letting that develop and you know i don't have to stand with them with bleaching often you have to be very close by you need to be looking at what you're doing a lot more so my bleach bleaching price reflect that i'd probably say um nearly double the amount of what you would for your color maybe you might put your toners in that or maybe you might charge separately um and regrowth again would be bleach regrowth and large bleach regrowth are different because i need more time for someone for a normal four to five weeks bleach regrowth than i do for someone that's 10 or 12 weeks so that always comes into play so i a few different prices for bleaching i think you should have small bleach regrowth a larger regrowth and a total bleach change so hopefully that will give you some guidance there is that kind of what you were thinking elaine perfect all right so um here we are cleansing in non-uniform ways so for example um, I know Ashley said earlier she does reverse colouring for bleaching. Me too. So if I've got somebody with larger regrowth, for example, um, is more than a centimetre. Anyone that's more than a centimetre, this is what has to be done. So don't, um, when I say a centimetre, I mean a centimetre from the parting of where you're choosing. Because often um, it's not either side, uh, you know, that gives you like a, a very, really large regrowth so anything over a centimeter is important to do this technique 
So I would be doing my reverse um, colouring and I would be making sure that I am reversing from here to here on all my bleaches. So I'm going to be doing that first and I won't be touching the roots. Very important, we have to be very, very neat. So that will be done first everywhere. I probably let, by the time I've done that and started in my darkest areas um, and I work slightly differently because I work in my darkest areas first, um, which is usually where the occipital bone is. So I don't necessarily start with my quarters at the back. I'll split the hair into four, um, but I move my quarter, not from the round of the head, I move it further back. So um, my quarter will be smaller at the back than it is at the front because I want to be able to pick that darker area on that occipital that comes all the way round. Hairline, top here, and this bottom hairline, that always takes quickest. So I notice that I have to do that bit first. I always have four bowls mixed or, or ready. So I'll only ever mix 20 grams of deco cream for the roots, um, 20 grams of deco and um, 40 grams of 20 volume. And each bowl will be sat there. I won't mix them together because the different, you know, when you're bleaching, if you mix that product, it starts oxidising straight away and you'll get 20 minutes in the bowl rather than 20 minutes on the hair. And by the time I put that bowl that's been there for 20 minutes on the head, it will be much weaker. Do you remember I said bleaching, once you've mixed it, um, declines after about 25 minutes. So it's really important that we think about how we mix and prepare our colour how we're going to apply that reverse colouring, making sure we do those areas first. And then once we've done that, I then go back through and then I apply to my regrowth and then I overlap onto the area that I've just done. Not overlap onto, you know, um, bleached hair, but just onto that, that little band that I was doing first. That little overlap is important so that it gets that boost again and enough product. So we've got some um, different ways of um, bleaching here um, and cleansing areas in a, a non-uniform way. So here is our diagnosis. We've got often patchy hair from um, light, lighter color at the roots to what you've got sort of darker bits on the ends. Um, perhaps they've done some home color themselves. First part for me would always be to use SOS Utilities, make sure I get any old toner out, any colour that I can lift a little bit or remove out a little bit before I start bleaching is really important. Start doing the darker areas first. Now, thinking about this, how would I do that? So um, later I'm going to show you some different balayage techniques of what type of bleach I might use where because that's really important too. So bleaching is not just a straightforward run anymore. Um, it's become much more technical, especially because um, we're constantly thinking about the hair um, and the damage that we can create with these products. So um, what can I protect with the hair um, when you're doing this? Yes, the scalp oil is amazing to massage through, uh, barrier scalp. I never do a bleach without applying scalp oil and even after I've washed off and I'm ready to tone I will reapply scalp oil it's perfect to get no irritations um, sorry just that's it and then um, so any of my darker areas um, first remove those and um, protect with um, you know the new trend oil that's brilliant for protection. So for example, if I had a band through here that was a little bit lighter and I needed to do all work on this and all work back on this, I would actually get the oil, I'd lift the hair and I'd pop some on into areas that I need and just massage it in. That will really help protect those little lighter areas that we don't need to lift straight away. Okay, my next, um, 
little describing you can see i've got lovely home balayage there um my next uh important part to carry on with the bleaching and how we would um yes um I, I would keep my same level of peroxides to all the lengths when you're doing less coloring and bleaching absolutely um it's really important that we do these parts on a new bleach and if I'm doing a very small regrowth here, I wouldn't use 30 volume on that and then 20 volume on the roots because often when we apply, it will uh, swell and go up, like, not swell because our products don't swell, but um, it will move or we will drag it onto um, the natural hair. So I, I would stay with that. Now, um, great question because onto this next slide that I created, um, it's really easy for clients to see. I'm going to sort of incorporate this uh, as I go back to the salon. I was thinking when I was looking at what clients know about colour, what they don't know about colour, what they're intrigued by more. They don't. They know what they want it to look like, but they probably don't have any idea um, how it's going to get there. Um, and actually, sometimes they say, oh, "I want it all light on the ends." But you're like, OK, well, do you want a few highlights on the top? How do you want it to look? So this was a really simple um, slide to explain a balayage and the best technique for the clients. Um, you're welcome, Emma. Um, I didn't know. Sometimes the client changes the mind, their mind. Like you start it and then they're like, oh, you are going to go to the root, aren't you? Or um, can I just say, <laughs> yeah, I like the whole one too. Um, am i gonna have i don't want it too dark like too dark there i do want some little light bits so this for me when i was working through i thought how can i explain to the client the best way so they have pictures of what they like and then this is my picture to show them actually look this is a deep balayage where you have lots and lots of dark through the top and your heavy blonde on the ends so that for me would be a deep, deep balayage where it's really light on the ends. Then we have got balayage highlights. So these are all the way up. You can create um, highlights, but deep highlights. So maybe you might call this um, deep balayage highlights. So they're quite separated, but lots of blonde on the ends. Then we've got balayage for the face. So really that's where it's lighter. And then through the back, there's hardly any, and it's just quite soft on the ends because I actually love that balayage face. That for me is really probably one of my favorites where it's a little bit lighter through here. And then I don't have too much in the back. I quite like it where it's softer, especially for young clients or clients that are just new to having a little bit of color. So I think that's really important. And then we've got um, another type of balayage highlights where you can see we've got deeper pieces going up and finer pieces. And then the other one, which is lots of highlights with a balayage. So one would be um, really quite a lot of highlights through the top and different where some are close, some are further away, but it's really heavy on the ends. So it's really important um, you can see with the balayage face, the darker areas are more darker through. So they'd have more natural through the bottom. Of course, you can add more to these if you felt that you need to. And each one of these, I would probably, I, in my mind, I've got a standard technique that I would use for each one. But that's a different uh, day. Um, but then that way, it keeps me very um, focused and also driven to what I need. This meaning, what does my client need? How can I explain that better? Um, how much root does she want? Um, does she want a natural, her natural root, or does she want it more coloured? I always encourage natural root because I hate having to do it when it's coloured. Um, just because it's much easier. So I would like them to be more natural at the top. I want to see more natural hair but of course maybe they've got a lot of gray hair so they've got to color their root i've got some clients that like colored hair all the way down here and then lighter balayage i've got some that like that dark but want highlights to come up to here and i have to explain okay you, 
I don't want to be, create a dark base, like a five, and then you want these light highlights, balayage lights or baby lights through the top, but you want them on a level eight. How do I maintain that? It's really difficult. And so with this, I can then explain to my client, okay, look, we could be a six through the top and then we could then we can achieve an eight through the rest of your hair and maybe slightly a few lighter nine pieces so that you can create that lightness and still have your grey coverage. So these, for me, are really important questions. Um, and also... Uh, do they want a root shadow to create depth afterwards? Maybe they want it to, maybe you want to keep them all natural because it's easier, but they'd like a little bit of depth. So clients might say to me, oh, I'd like it just a little bit darker than my natural hair because perhaps they've got little baby lights around the front, you know, where it's a little bit lighter. I wouldn't colour their hair darker then. My idea would be, I would say, okay, we're going to do a root shadow. So something with a really low volume developer, five volume, for example, I can do that on wet hair. I can create balayage highlights with a little root shadow. So she gets to be darker at the root, which she said, because she said, oh, just a little bit. Little for me means half a shade, maybe a shade tops. So I can create those without having, because I'm already thinking of my balayage in nine weeks time when she's coming back for me what will be easier maybe next time you might only need to have balayage around the face rather than a whole lot of balayage highlights so I'm already thinking about the next thing and with this slide I felt that I could really explain that to clients also um this leads me to be thinking about bleaching. So earlier, Irma said to me, would I keep the same level of peroxide? Now, when I'm working with balayage, I won't be. I'll be thinking about different areas that I might need. So for example, am I working freehand? Will I place anything in packets? Am I working near the re like roots? Am I working on coloured hair? So I would be changing the choice of bleach so for example, if I look at deep balayage on this little slide here, I need to redo my deep balayage. I don't need anything on the ends, but she would like it to be a little bit lighter through the ends. How would I do that? All right, first of all, I'm gonna crystal gel because often she'll get a little bit lighter through the ends because I'll have removed all of that minerals, any thing that's coating the hair that may dull that down. Now I've got a true reflection of what I'm doing. Then I think, okay, maybe I could get away with doing um, a little SOS utilities on those very tips. I might think about that. In that deep balayage area that I need to travel back up because she had deep balayage and it started from about here and then it became, but now it's grown out. And she wants it just travelled up a little bit more. Not balayage highlights, but she wants them travelled up more. I can use freehand work. I would use that with 30 volume. And I would use that with the Deco Orange. Um, and then if I wanted this bit lighter, I would use maybe 10 volume and Deco Dust Plus. Because the Dust Plus is more gentle and it's longer slower sorry lifting but giving me this area to concentrate on my um, deco orange which gives me maximum lift so you can see how i've used two different types of bleaches on the hair i'm maintaining that um uh maintaining her condition on the ends but i'm getting that li lift i need on where i want the deep balayage to be moved back up does that make sense how do you feel about uh, this slide? I just wanted to add it, add it in to give you some ideas where to use different bleaches, how to explain to clients what different bleaches you might need. I think it kind of gives you um, a different consultation pattern because we talk about the clients bringing everything to us, um, but actually we need to give something to them because they don't understand. Um, and, and often this is harder to maintain, isn't it? 
Um, nobody's asked me yet. I put it in red to say, ask me about the new product. So um, something exciting happening over the next year. So not straight away. Um, Passion will let you know when that's out as soon as possible. But we have been developing some new bleaches. There's quite a few that will um, change and enhance. We've improved formulas. We're constantly improving formula, which is amazing. Um, but one of the most important ones is we've been working on a product that is for freehand work. So a bleach that develops but keeps it encased and uh so you can use it in like air work so for me that will be perfect for this balayage and then i can change the levels of peroxide that i need to and where i can also change the amount of mixables that i need to and where so for those very sensitized ends but i want it to be a little bit lighter because maybe she's only you know a seven and i really want it to be a nine on those ends um, I can start thinking about um, lower volumes of peroxide, more protection in the product, um, slightly higher here. Of course, nothing but 20 volume on the root, near the root. Thank you very much. Um, but yes, uh, hopefully that gives you a really good help on this part. The next part that I wanted to talk to you about. So I'm going to say to you, look at the um, balayage deep one just there so you can see there's a lot of dark through here um it's really important for me to express that sometimes depending on your work depending on what you're looking at with clients so this is a great tool but you cannot allow your colored hair and your bleached hair to mix so this is really important what do I need to do? What is my most important part? I want it to lift, but I don't want that orangey bit and then a lovely colour on the ends. So I need it to be a creamy blend all the way through. Please don't let your bleach touch when you're developing colour. So either look at her hair as it is and say, yes, uh, this is a great base. Or if you don't think it's a great base and you think, Actually, um, I need to balance that out because there's a lot of warmth through this banding bit here. It's better to do it in two parts. So do her regrowth of covering the grey hair and she wants it to be cooler. So cover it to roughly here where the balayage is starting. Let that develop and take that off and then do all your freehand work with balayage after. So you could get a really nice, like using the point one twos, the new ones, you could get a lovely cover with white hair or greys all the way to where the balayage sort of starts. And I know that I want some fresh pieces up here. It would be better to do that and then do your freehand work afterwards, especially with the new bleach that's coming out. So think about those things. And this is why then you can start to think about your costs for the client so she understands it more because often we get caught out don't we so we will try to say oh i don't know it's whatever it is for your price for balayage um great but actually she needed to have that global color done first so i would charge the global and then the balayage and i might not need to do that every time but it will probably be that first time of her coming back and i won't know that until i've done an online consultation with that a moment of saying okay show me how what do you not like how is this color in here and get her to analyze it well actually it looks a bit gold i don't want it to look gold i'd like all of this to be darker and then light and then my colors here and this color i want up here and i think okay otherwise she's gonna look a little bit like a tabby cat isn't she where she's got a beautiful color a little bit of gold somewhere in here balayage that's traveled up highlights maybe balayage highlights and she's got about four colors going on and I don't know if you've noticed but I think the balayages at the moment are very um clean with one color and then clean with the lighter color through the top so we we can't plan that and we're not charging correctly if we're not doing that consultation and perhaps using this as a guide all right so um I'm going to move. Yeah, I'm excited, Maria, too. 
my daughter is 11 8 but has a black balayage all over tint can she have okay so this depends on how much um you need to remove so if she's got an all over black color you've got to make her a lighter brown to start with um because she's not going to want a blonde balayage over the black um probably i would say um we could message privately about this i'm i'm happy to share with um on passion for hair hotline so we would see what happens um but for for me this part first i would have to be doing all my sos utilities get some of that black um things to molecules out of the hair so that i could then make her a lighter brown um she might if she wants it to end up being a level eight you've got to get her back from black to a level eight first and then think about your balayage so that she could have lighter softer balayage pieces and if you've got a particular um technique for say each one of these five um processes then that would be really easy because you'd be able to repeat that a long process yeah she wouldn't get that done in one day or two probably it would be over a little time um but the SOS utilities would be your first port of call. But I'm going to cover that in just a second. Okay. So, um, where are we? Let's move down to our next slide. So, uh, you know me. I am always talking about undertones and how the hair should um, be. So, for example, the undertones when I'm thinking about a level five if my clients are level five my brain has switched now that i don't see level five my thought process is that okay my level five she's going to be red orange underneath that so i know she's a five because i can see it's a five and i've matched up my color swatch taking it out of the book getting her in the right light making sure everything's the same way so that i can really do my diagnosis correctly but in my mind i know she's a red orange so that I don't ever not think about what's when I lift the hair, what's underneath. And if I want to lift the hair with tint, because this is not just bleaching, but when I'm tinting the hair, if I want it to be cooler, but I've got to lift, because she's naturally a five, she might want to be a six or a seven, what will be my undertone of those? So that for me I almost when I think about a shade I think hmm, a six okay she's going to be an orangey red seven okay that's going to be a lot of orange in there so I know all the time I'm thinking how can I neutralize this what level of peroxide do I need how much lighter do I need to look how much more lift do I need to show the ash to show um, a true gold reflect so I'm constantly thinking about those things rather than um, you know, just the base colour or her natural colour. All right, so um, next stop is um, when you're thinking about the intensity, intensity. So here is the reflection that we may see. And then on the other side is the level um, that you've reached. But you see, um, so if you're sort of, if it's a very pale yellow, you still know there's plenty of yellow in there, but um, the actual reflection of how it shows, so the intensity. So um, you know when you lift hair and you're lifting, say, black, for example, it goes red first. You need to think about the intensity of that red. Is it like red, red, or is it orange, red? Will I, If I lifted it a tiny bit more and I get it to orange, then I may be able to neutralise it. Um, definitely um, with a blue uh, rather than a green so I'm constantly thinking about what level of intensity of that color okay it looks like it's um, an orange yellow or it looks like it's a yellow orange but is it really an orange yellow because this will change my neutralizing ideas and and the level of peroxide that I'm lifting to so for example, if we're talking about cosmetic colour, for example, this one is really, really important um, for you guys to look at. For example, I'm a level five, the client is a level five, 
and um, she needs to lift to a level eight. How are we going to do that? What will show her um, melanin? What will that look like? So what will be instead of, so I'm lifting the hair and I know I've chosen a point two. Am I going to lift? Will it look more like a point three or more like a point two? So this part is really important. So here you can see this, her natural hair is a level five and her level, her target level is a six. Normally, what would we say is one level of lift. Perhaps we would use 20 volume. This has got no gray hair, by the way, we're just working on achievable target. So for me here, she's a level five and I want to get her to, um, her target level is a six. And normally I, a six O, oh, so she likes that natural, neutral shade. Normally we would say, yes, 20 volt will be fine because we're lifting one shade. However, think about our um, undertones. Our undertones on a level five and a six is orange. So she will be a six but her undertone will shine, shine through and she'll be more of a 6.3. So we haven't achieved our 6.0. Yet, we will say, well, we got the lift, but it's really warm. Oh, you have a lot of warmth in your hair. Or the client will say, I have a lot of warmth in my hair. But actually, what we need to do is think about still using a, um, our target shader for a 6 because that is her colour choice. But I actually need to lift her hair because the intensity of that orange, I need to lift her hair one shade lighter so that it will show a true level six. You'll say, shall I change my tin? No, don't change the tin. The best way to lighten the residue on in underneath the undertone is with a higher volume of peroxide. And this is why we need to use them. So then we can expose her um, undertone of being lighter. So the 6O, when it sits on there, sits more as a 6O rather than a 6.3. Does that make sense? So for you guys that are really nervous about using high volumes of peroxide, this is why. This is why we encourage it so much. Um, and I talk about undertones, I'll probably drive people crackers, um, but it's really important. So here is, um, please feel free to snap this one because it's really good. In your mind, you know exactly what you've got to do because this should be in your staff room if you're thinking about um, products and things. Um, so we've got ideal base, uh, we've got the reflex that you want, and the ideal levels that they show on perfectly. Would the app take this into account? Yes, it really does. Um, they work a lot on um, undertones and they give you the correct level of peroxide choice. So sometimes it will say 40 volume and you're using a natural shade like 70 and you think, oh my God, that's gonna, you know, it's 40 volume. I've never used that before. Most I'll use is 30. I can't use 40 on the scalp but you can and the app will tell you to. So have faith in the product and the app that it's working correctly. Um, no, you don't get any more fading because you're using um, faulty volume. What you're actually doing is get a truer tone um, of, is the census app um, on that first uh, screen that I showed you. I'll show you again in a second, Sandra, that's no problem. So if you're looking at anything on an ash reflex, um, we're looking at uh, one level lighter. Um, anything that's a beige, so we're thinking point twos. So if I know my target shade is a 6.1 and she's a 5, I really know I need to get the hair to be the residue um, underneath, uh, the residual melanin, up to a level 7 so that my 6.1 can really show. Otherwise, it's always going to look warmer. So here you can see natural gold and coppers. We need to go half a level lighter. Well, how do we do half a level lighter? 
We can't. So the best way to do is do one level lighter and you'll get a real good reflection of tone. Remember, this is all on uh, natural hair. Your grey hair will cover or your white hair will cover whatever you put on it. So I need to get the balance of them both together. And this is what gives you um, that perfect uh, finish. So anything that's a bright copper, red or mahogany, um, if I know that I need to, um, if I know, say I'm a five and I want to go to a 6.4 and I've got some um, um, grey hair or however that works or white hair or however you're looking, I can go on the same level so I can use 20 volt. If I want vibrancy and brightness, so I will get vibrancy and depth if I use 20 volt. If I want brightness and real vibrancy of real lightness of the 6.4, then I'd use 30 volume. So again, I'm thinking about what does my client want? How, how do I want to express that? What is the finished result of my client's wishes? So hopefully that will give you a really good idea. And this part is so important for when we do our um, point one twos, the new shades. Okay, are we all there? Are we all together? I've got a little bit to do with colour removal and um, then um some mixables so i know you guys wanted that so it will probably be another little half hour or so so um i shall get busy but any questions about those undertones at the moment i think we're not too bad Brilliant. I'm just trying to work in sections for you all so it doesn't kind of get lost. I can have a scoot over the questions at the end. Some of them I've answered already as we've gone along. Um, okay, so I know one of the things you guys uh, were talking about was um, why would you use, uh, how do we use the SOS? And so removing some colour without bleaching. Um, if I'm doing any bleach work, if I'm doing any work that I need to go lighter or thinking about going lighter, I will definitely do um, SOS utilities or perhaps changer. So um, here we've got um, changer. And just so that you guys know, changer and crystal um, colour remover, uh, they're having a little update. Um, the boxes all will be updated but also the fluid here you can use the fluid um you'll be able to use them on both so this will actually uh, be a little bit more beneficial and a little bit better for um stock control and things like that um if i'm going to why choose changer or crystal color remover changer is for um direct color um removing only so think about fard think about direct bang color stuff like that crazy colors these are the first ones that i would use um, to remove these colors now if i've got a client that perhaps has um for example she's used i don't know schwarzkopf live it's a really bright oh did i say that out loud and <laughs> um, the live it's a really bright color and it's got lots of direct color pigment inside um, I'm going to need to be using our crystal colour remover first, do all of that service. What will it, it will then leave me with really bright direct colour pieces, then I can go over and remove those. That's the way around to use them. If you're just removing direct colour, you can go straight in with changer first. If you need to do both, it's always the one for oxidative colour first. So you cannot use crystal colour remover to remove direct colours. Crystal colour removers is to remove toners, anything that you've mixed an activator, like develop it in with. So this is really important that you get them the right way round. Point one twos are not on the app yet. Should I put it in the two or the one on the app instead of a guide? Okay, so currently at the moment, Maria, we are doing an update on the app. And when the update's finished, uh, the point one twos will be on there. So I know that they're popping those on there at the moment. And there's a few, um, there'll be a few changes on there. So that's what they're working towards at the minute. Um, 
Okay, so change is exactly for direct color. You can use it with the fluid or you can use it with um, 10 volume or five volume. Um, for the cooler shades, the blues, the purples, the greens, maybe the cooler pinks, you'd only use the fluid. And for the brighter, um, warmer shades, i.e. red, yellow, orange, you can mix it with um, the developer. Um, with the fluid, you don't have to worry about placement because it won't leave natural hair. As soon as you mix developer with, it's really important that you remember not to apply that on any natural hair because you will get lift with it. So that's the quick important things about changer and just remind you when you should use it which way round. All right, so we're going to move on to the crystal colour um, remover, the fluid, um, and show you how that looks. Um, one of the important things to think about, how do I describe this to clients? Because I use it a lot um, and I encourage it to use a lot. So Census is crystal colour remover. If you guys are using um, Malibu C, that will be CPR. Um, they are a very similar type of product um, and is all about colour reducing. So one of the things that I always wish, this said colour reducer rather than remover. I think that people and hairdressers have a, a mind of thinking that this colour lifts. It does not lift the hair. What it does is, is help to shrink colour molecules and help them to be removed out of the hair easier. They break them down. This is why we can't always remove all of them, especially with box dyes, because their pigments are so unstable. So it's really important that as a hairdresser, we have a really good thought process about crystal colour reducers or colour reducers. Um, and when we say to the clients, oh, we can remove this colour without bleach, um, there's only so much that this product will do or achieve. So I, it's important to tell your client that she's not going to see um, a whole load of lightness unless, of course, she's really light underneath. Um, she's For my hair, you just wouldn't see that. However, I would never go lighter without using this first. When you use this product, it makes your bleaching service after much quicker, more effective. Um, and I'll explain why in this next shade. So, uh, sorry, in this next slide. So when we think about when we're at college and we're thinking about how colour is made and how it's developed, here we can see we've got two parts here which says intermediate. This is our cream colour here. That's everything that's in the tube. We add that to peroxide, whichever we're developing. Now, remember, the higher volumes of peroxide, the lighter the residual melanin you lift. This is a really important factor when you see crystal colour remover. So um, here we have them all mixed together and it makes a colour molecule larger so that it can't escape the hair again. Do you remember this with our um, uh, college training? It was normal. Now, when we want to use removers, so we need to do a reduction of pigment, here we can see we start with a large colour molecule. We apply the reducing mixture, in our case, CPR, or in my case, um, SOS Utilities. And what, what happens is the intermediates start to separate and then you can see they're two. So what happens is when we use a high pH shampoo, we can actually draw some of those colour molecules out um, and start to separate them. Now, even if they're separated, when you think about bleach, Debbie always says it's like chomping through, it eats everything. So it's easy to eat through colour molecules that have been separated. Maybe they don't come out of the hair completely or your residual melanin is not very light because perhaps, for example, my hair, I only ever use 10 volume um, mostly because it covers my few sparkles and I'm dark, so I'm dark anyway. If I want to go lighter, say for a red, for example, so say I wanted to be like a 5.5, most people would say, okay, we've, we've got to bleach that. 
and I know for sure I'd have to bleach it but the first thing I would do would be use my colour remover on it I've got no lightness in my residual melanin so when I put this product on twice I remove that following my manufacturer's instructions I look at my hair and probably it looks the same maybe half a shade difference but it will look the same all I know is from experience I have total faith that this product has worked inside the hair separating these intermediates making them easier for me to bleach so that when I apply my bleach application I probably only have to do one bleach application rather than all of it uh, like twice over so this for me is really important because I've got fine hair it's delicate it doesn't really like bleach so all of these things will help towards lifting my hair now however if I had a few old highlights underneath perhaps they were a little um I've used 30 volume here or um like a few bleach highlights when um this comes up all of the dark hair that I use 20 10 vol on won't have much movement but what you will see is that the areas that we've used 30 on it before for example bleach pieces or 30 volume with tin the residual melanin is lighter in those areas so naturally it will be lighter where that color crystal color remover has been on so here for example this one's really important so you can see this first one towards um, the left hand side is uh, natural hair then the next one looks sort of almost coppery um, and that's probably hair that's had like 10 volume on it um, maybe 20 volume the next one along number three is lighter so that's had um, maybe 30 volume or even 40 volume on it the one that's on the end you can see it's lighter on the tips but it's got sort of an orangey band in the middle and then it's lighter here so at some point you can see she's lighter but at some point she went darker so you can see the level of peroxide choice was lower so you can start to see how the history is in the hair so when you're making changes when you're going lighter when your client says to you I want a balayage and they're all dark brown and perhaps they've coloured it themselves and you need to say what's the history and they're not telling you so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use um, a colour reducer on your hair this will help break down some of this colour that's in the hair so that when I bleach it and put your balayage in I know exactly where to go I know um, uh, I did some training in a salon once and a young girl had coloured all her own hair dark she wanted a balayage but I asked her her history and she said oh actually um, I had balayage years ago it's only like 18 months previous but she said oh the hairdresser then had used bleach with 40 volume I said and I said okay but she'd coloured her hair darker and I, I thought I need to know where those lighter pieces are with that with the damage so what we did was crystal colour remover then we balayaged and we coloured everything else in between and around but when we crystal colour removed we could see where she was really light in certain areas so I could either use that to my advantage because it's already lighter and use a very low volume of peroxide if her hair was in good enough condition or totally avoid those areas put new balayage pieces in that aren't damaged and then just cover those back up being darker and richer again and I can explain to her why and telling her to keep her hair to get better condition so hopefully that gives you some guidance on why I use crystal color remover it's probably my most favorite product in my toolbox for getting even colors um, any questions on colour remover whilst I'm there because then I'm going to tell you how to recolour the hair now we've bleached it all out and removed it we need to recolour it any questions or are you guys happy um, we have got some separate webinars that we've done um, that go really into detail on our YouTube channel so you can find if you're unsure or you need some more information um, just let me know Alright, so I'm now going to move on to um, 
recolouring the hair. So the rules for recolouring, um, and this gives you easy distribution, respect of the hair structure, development of pigment. So, you know, when you're going from blonde to dark, you do this, or perhaps you're going to cover up the old balayage or something like this. Um, you need to divide the hair into four sections, apply a small amount of the product only in the areas that are lighter and where it's needed. So if I don't need it on the brown, um, don't apply it to that because you'll just increase the depth of that. So really think about where you need to apply this product. Um, you need to leave it on 10 minutes, uh, but you do all of that first on the ends. When you need to do the roots, you pop that on the ends first, do your roots, and then you can cover all the way through. So it is on for 10 minutes, but it's not interfering with your daily um, column. So that's really good. Okay, here are the objectives. So if you are gold or natural, what should you recolor with first? So for example, if you're um, a 6.3 and the ends are, you know, a shade um, lighter, so one shade lighter and above, you always need to recolor. If they're a shade lighter, you need to recolor with a level lighter still on that gold. And the same with natural. So if she's... Um, a six, her target is a 6.0, um, you need to recolor with say 7.3 on those lighter areas and then you can put your 6.0 over the whole lot. And really simply, um, everything else is exactly the same. One level lighter, mahogany red and violet will always be a red cover and um, anything that's brown is on the same level. And the application process is phase one is here, the green is the recolouring. Um, phase two would be to re redo your roots, so apply to your root area. And phase three would be to take it straight the way through. So it's sort of almost reversing everything. Um, all right, so whilst we're recoloring so in phase three coloring those ends so i've done my recolor on phase one on the areas that need it then i apply my roots then on my phase three coloring straight the way through for lengths and ends what would i like in here this is where i recommend we use nectar so nectar is our important recovery system um, restructuring system for colouring services only. We cannot use nectar in with our bleaches. This is where we use mixables. So we want to make sure that we stick with using nectar for anything cream colouring and mixable for our bleaching. So first example I wanted to say is we don't need nectar on our roots. So nectar is something that we use for our mid lengths and ends to restructure. Um, that first part of the hair um, is a healthy structure, that first centimetre, and is very soft keratin, so we need it to um, uh, be able to lift, and nectar will um, help to prevent that. So it's really important that it's only used on for the lengths and the ends. And you can see, as you get towards the ends, you've got um, less cuticles. So, um, and the hair starts to feel more brittle and dry. With nectar, it helps to put that moisture back into the hair and make the hair feel more supple and more bouncy. Um, and it helps it to feel more like hair again. So any time that you can use that nectar um, with uh, 10 volume, uh, is the best way to use it, um, is the most important thing that you can do for that client's um, uh, service because it really helps to put the hair back into good condition. Um, here is uh, the measurement. So if you guys are ever wondering what, what I should do for the um, colouring services. So for example, a permanent hair colour says no nectar. And I say except in MC2 because there's a perfect um, amount of nectar already in MC2, as you guys know, uh, if you use MC2. Um, and that's already in there. So you don't add anything to the roots. So if you're using nectar with Julieta or M3K, don't add nectar if you're lifting the hair. 
Now there's two ways that, uh, sorry, three ways that we then add nectar and how we think of it. So for example, I just showed you the recoloring service, this one. And my service for nectar in phase three would be um, restructuring color. So 20 grams of nectar added to 100 mils of product. So if I don't need 100 mils of product, I only need 50 mils of product. When I say total 100, so that's 40 grams of color, 60 grams of peroxide, making a total of 100 in the bowl. I then add 20 grams on top of that into my bowl. If I don't need that much product, just halve it. It keeps it really simple for you. And the reason I'm doing that is because I need plenty of color to recolor, and I just want some nectar to help stabilize and restructure the hair. If I'm doing a demi-permanent color and I'm just using 10 volume, for example, um, clients are new to color, I want something soft, I just want to start her off on color, but I want super duper shine, um, it would be 33 grams of color to 100 mils. If I just need to do a toner, for example, and um, the best way to do use toners is always with 10 volume, um, 5 volume as well you can use, uh, but you have to think about the natural hair when you're using 10 volume. Uh, on total bleaching though, if you've done a bleach, full head of bleach, say mine, but platinum, and I needed to tone that, my idea would be to use 10 volume, and then I'd um, have 100 mils of my toner, say, I don't know, uh, 10.1 or 11.71, something like that. Um, I'm going to use 50 grams of nectar in that product. I can't tell you how beautiful it makes the hair feel after bleaching. It's fantastic. All right. Um, so that's nectar, everything to do with cream colouring. Um, now our other restructuring service is Mixable Plus. And this is um, in the... Um, we can use this with bleaching. So yes, before we could use that with cream colouring, but now uh, we have nectar. So we don't use nectar as much. Um, and I encourage you to use Mixable Plus in all your bleach services. So we have, we can use it with any deco. Um, it's really good because it protects the hair from, um, I'm waving because Mia's just walked in, um, protects the hair and it hydrates the hair. And here are the measurements. So if I'm using any deco services, that's partial or total. So if I'm bleaching everything or perhaps I'm just highlighting um, and I've got no deco plus, this is just say, for example, um, deco orange or deco violet. Um, I would be using two mils um, per 10 grams of powder. So if I'm using... Um, 20 grams of powder, I'm going to use four mils of the filler. So it comes in two parts. You can see here, here is the filler in the small um, bottle. And then part two is the balm. And I'm going to explain how to use that. If you're using Deco, which has got Deco Dust Plus or Cream Plus, you only need to add one mil because we've already got Deco inbuilt into that product. And seven, we only need to use one mil per 10 grams of powder. So hopefully the, the most we really use is because remember, I'm always saying to you, only ever mix up 20 grams of bleach. You don't need to mix any more than that up because you, if you do, after 20 minutes, you can't use a whole bowl of bleach. So after 20 minutes, your product's deteriorating because you can't get that lift and you can't get that product on in 20 minutes. So you've just wasted all that product. Better for you to have very small pots. Or that's why I say 20 grams of colour is plenty for a quarter of bleaching um, and four of those. And that way you keep the strength of the bleach. You don't waste your product. You're not wasting this uh, filler. Um, it's really important, the mixtures and how much you're using. All right. Most important part of deco um, with mixables. So if you've used anything with a dust plus and you haven't added the filler, 
but you've used dust plus cream or the powder yes dust plus and um, when you remove that you rinse completely before you shampoo you apply this balm and you apply it all over and this will help to neutralize it will help to stop oxidation it's really important that you do that before shampooing and um, so anything with the filler or any bleaching product deco product with the plus sign on that will tell you that it's got this filler inside and that we need to remove it this way once we've done that first five minutes we rinse again and then we shampoo and proceed to whatever service we need to do next um, yes Maria I definitely use nectar in all of my toners <laughs> um, except if I've got toners with highlights because I can only then use cosmetic fix and um, it's pointless with nectar nectar works at his best um, production for nectar is at 10 volume because it travels into the hair more um, okay so here are the treatments so lots of you have asked me before um how do i um use this as a standalone treatment uh perfectly here so if you've got your list of treatments that you've got in the salon and you really want an intensive treatment this is the best um way to use it so um this is without coloring treatments of course you could use mixable balm uh, sorry mixable plus in your color service and then you might have them booked in for a um, treatment afterwards because their hair is very sensitized so do all of the same process in with your bleaching with the mixables do your toner by the way your toner should be um, with nectar because it's easier and then afterwards you could say let's do a real intense treatment and you could do the one for very sensitized hair which is 20 mils of balm and nine mils of filler towel dry the hair apply that wrap it up, pop heat on, whatever you're doing, hand massage, whatever you're doing with your client to really intensify that, um, it's amazing. The hair feels incredible afterwards. Are there any questions on nectar and mixables? Hopefully you've got them in the right places of when you um, to use them. Yeah? Is everybody good? I'm just waiting. <laughs> Fantastic. You're welcome. All right, so the last part um, is a new product um, alert. So I just want to show you um, is our um, ash brown, the palettes of the ash browns. This part is um, our new point one two. So I absolutely love them and um we know currently as the market's moving along that the ash browns are going to be really important everybody likes that cooler feeling um and uh for you guys that haven't used them that just get onto them because they are beautiful and they're really nice as toners as well um the lighter shades like the 8.12 is lovely as a toner really to neutralize and soften um those balayage uh, work it's really beautiful okay so um we decided that with the ash browns um the best results are using a developer that is one level higher than the usual diagnosis which is why we've got to add those to the app um in yes uh georgia um it is designed for mc2 and julietta so not m3k um MC2 and Julietta, perfect, because they're our cooler shades at the moment anyway as well. So um, what we wanted to make sure is that it removes and counteracts that warm natural pigment that's um, made as you're lifting the hair. So that's made visible by the developer. So do you remember we spoke earlier about when you're lifting, if you're not lifting enough with the developer, um, never change your target shade because whatever you choose is what you choose it, if, a, if you want a six it will be a six just because you're using 40 volume does not mean it will be a seven it will be a six because the tube of tint tells you it's a six so that's really important 
The 40 volume is lifting the um, residual melanin to make it more visible that it's a 0.12. So this part is really um, the most important part. Um, so here we go. We've got a few examples, an unusual uh, usual diagnosis, natural hair level five, and her target level is a level seven medium blonde. Um, and her 30 volume is normally used because you're going to go five, six, seven, aren't you? So that would be normal. But if you're using the ash browns, we recommend she's a level five and she's a 7.2. Her normal diagnosis would be 30, but we already said we know that with the ash browns, we need to lift a little bit more to show this 0.12 off at its full potential. So in this case, we recommend using 40 volume, or 12%, and it lifts the natural hair three shades. So she's going to be that perfect 7.12. This will ensure an accurate cool tone. All right, does that make sense for you guys? So if I show you these slides now, um, these are su suggested tones. So natural colour of a level four. Here are the shades, 4125, 12, 612, 712 and 812. Um, here we've got um, activators 20 and 30 on the 412 and the 512. Sorry, my typo there, 612 should be 40 volume there. And if you want to use a 7.12 and an 8.12 and she's a level four, you can't do that. So you'll need to think about doing a bleaching service first. So here we are, you can see we've got our natural, far, like all our natural colors of fives. And here are the shades. And then you can understand why you need um, 20 volume for the level four and the level five. It, because she's a level five as soon as you start going lighter to a 6.12 you're going to need that extra level of lift so 30 volume is required and you can see if you want 712 she's a five use 40 volume don't be shy with this because um the point one twos need that extra level and this is why um when we pop that into the app it's just taking that little bit longer because that's not normally our um, required amount and um, so you can see uh, if she's a level six um, you can see how we can make sure with 812 is where we use our 40 volume and you'll get those three levels of lift beautifully and the 8.12 will show off really nicely i'm really liking the one two and on a level eight because um, lots of my clients want to be that little bit lighter um, on the root area but want it to be cooler and this is perfect for me and don't forget if you feel that you want a little extra coolness in your one two you can always add um silver modulator in with this or argento modulator in with this and it will keep make it that little bit more cooler still are there any questions on our um point one twos I think they're all good. And they're all, um, yeah, they are perfect for olive skin tones. So I absolutely adore them. They're gorgeous. <laughs> yeah, they are revolutionary. <laughs> really fantastic. And the last thing, because I've kept you forever and day, are they in the shade chart? Um, no, they have... Um, so when you get them all in, they have the little ones and then you can stick them into your shade guides. But I'm sure actually with the new shade guides, they'll be already in there. Um, okay, so um, I'm going to answer that question just now, actually, um, Sandra, before I say the last part. So um, we said here, sometimes my toners can be patchy after bleaching. What's your best tips for this? So um, definitely the mixable balm and definitely um, recovery spray um, will help to even out the porosity. But also it's really important to have a look whether you need to pre-tone before you tone. So for example, if um, the, the ends are very, very sensitised, 
you may need to um, so for example you've lifted up and it's probably quite yellow and then you've got some little patches where perhaps she's been somewhere else and it's got an overlay of bleach or um, something like that you might need to use um, fard so you might need to use a touch of the gold which sounds really odd but I need to make that an even yellow first before I can neutralize it um, I know Danius, you've put um, Deox, yep, perfect, Deox is really good, obviously the mixable balm on the second part, but it's about um, levelling out the colour, so sometimes we've got tiny little white areas that you can't see, you can just see, and when you put the toner on, they become patchy because they absorb a little bit more, so they might be a little bit more blue or a little bit more mushroomy, deeper of whatever colour toner that you've chosen especially on those tips but to stop that anything with those ash tones that you're going to do just even out that yellow and the gold fard or gold mixed with sand is absolutely perfect to do that um, and then when you tone it neutralizes it all together and um, it's sort of almost like a pre-toning for toning you know like what we do with platinum dawn we use platinum dawn don't we to even out and get it really white before we put a grey toner on. Sometimes we need to do the opposite, making a little um, pale yellow all the way across the board and then toning, and you'll get some really good results with that. So the last thing I have to show you, which is coming very, very soon, and we are going to organise, hopefully, a presentation, chat with Daniel and Debbie, um, when we're going to do this presentation so keep your eyes open is Alyssa and Alyssa is our new smoothing service I'm really excited about it Georgia um, one of the things that really bothered me about a smoothing service so in your mind this is not to replace smart perm or anything like that because this is not a perming situation this is more to type thinking on your keratin blow dryers your brazilian blow dryers but the formula is very very different and you're able to achieve about four um different ways to work with the hair so even on super super curly hair you can do this treatment and keep the curl but reduce um, the frizz. So that this um, I'll explain to you when we do our um, presentation on this because I think you guys are really going to love it. And also um, you can use it on some bleached hair um, and there's certain different ways to use it. So yep, it's their new um, diamond lisse Alyssa. It's perfect. So I'm really excited. I've already got a few people in mind for this one, my clients. they going to be super excited so um yeah and by the time we do the presentation i'll be able to tell you how much it is what it, what to do how to get the best results with it um things that you shouldn't do and um the aftercare service with this as well is really good so um deck do you want to pop the questions on for me just think thank you he's so quick um and then we can just flick through, uh, probably just to re-answer if there's any. You guys can add questions if there's anything else that you need to pop on there. Um, and then we can do. So we already spoke earlier about um, how to encourage uh, crystal gel and what service. So I really liked what Richard mentioned earlier about being a, um, a detox service. And people are doing more for that for their body, for their skin. So probably I, I would suggest for that um, sort of terminology and why. I think once the client realises um, the problems that they're having or facing. And now especially, some are colouring, some are not. So it's a really good opportunity to get them started on this um, service. Uh, because once they start, they love it. Um, even with 30 volume and, and tint, using scalp oil, clients find their scalp is a bit irritated sometimes. Do you have any other ideas to stop that? 40 volume always worries me unless I know their scalp well. Well, do you know what? It's a, a really good one. Thank you, Chloe. Um, I'm not worried about 40 volume. Uh, often we tell the client too much. So we might say to the client, 
uh, we're going to change up, we're going to use 30 volume, blah, blah, blah. They don't really know what goes into that. And then their mind plays tricks with them. And then they say, oh, that's irritated me more. Sometimes we don't say anything to them. And we do find that they do have some irritation. Often what happens is, do you remember I was saying about the amount of product that you put on the hair and the oxidation process is longer it needs to be longer to get that lift so of course that oxidation process gives you all those tingling feelings make sure you use enough of the um, shield oil the shield oil is now um, much more improved formula from the scalp oil so when you start using the shield oil you'll notice the difference with that um, and really massage it in so that it's um, even pop it on areas that would be irritated like tips of their ears making sure that you get that little area in um, the back um, when you're lifting the hair like lifting the hair you want to make sure the hair is all lying flat so it sits quite nicely in clients will have different times that they are more irritated by products than others so for example um, different times of the month they'll be thinking uh, they'll be more susceptible to being irritated as we all are um, talk to them about what they've been using on their hair so make sure that they're not washing their hair first thing in the morning before coming in ask them to do that the night before all those types of things will really really help but 40 volume with tin won't damage the scalp but please check the scalp because even though we may know our client's scalp well-ish, through the month they may have changes. So for example, if they've scratched it themselves more, perhaps you know that um, scalp scr scratching is one of the biggest um, habit forming uh, things that you can do. So I encourage clients that are twizzlers or pickers or scratchers, you know, like all the time to take an antihistamine to try and get them out of scratching to stop that irritation because it's a that's a mind thing and they can make little uh, areas on their scalp that may be open and with that um, development of peroxide on there they're going to feel that irritation so often we're not checking the scalp enough um, but please don't worry 40 volume and our sensors tint won't cause um, like damage to the scalp obviously if you use 40 volume with bleach we've got another problem on our hands um but no hopefully that answers that question for you next one deck would you keep the same level of peroxide to all lengths when you're doing reverse coloring or bleaching yep we covered this one didn't we so um don't change those except when you're balayaging you might want a high level of bleach open air work on tinted areas on the darkest areas and very very low on the very tips but when you're coloring keep the same peroxides that's perfect any more questions thanks um i think that is us complete for the day <laughs> I've probably driven you all crazy but um, I hope that I've covered uh, enough information for you and it's really been fantastic to be here and ramble on this morning of the next, last couple of hours um, I hope you guys are all doing great and I hope to see you all soon sending you lots of love <laughs> thank you, you're welcome <laughs>